Music is a powerful thing. It can calm you down, energize you, and most importantly, bring people together. In my time of going to concerts and gigs, I've experienced the first two, but the Earth Garden has allowed me to experience the last. This is a festival like no other, in the heart of Malta. A lot of words can be used to describe this festival, but I think the organizers themselves put it the best. An open air, non-mainstream music festival. There are over 40 international artists with a lot more, more local ones. And the music ranges from jazz, funk, electro, dubstep, techno, ska, reggae, alternative rock, and even a lot of indie stuff. You are simply bound to find something that you like and enjoy in one of the five stages. So let's get into some of the details. This festival runs for four nights from the end of May to early June in a national park right in the centre of Malta. It's a really easy area to get to with buses coming from the airport and buses practically coming from everywhere along the island. And the bus stop is maybe like two minutes out from the actual festival so it's super close. A lot of people, especially locals, get their one day pass for 15 euro or a 4 day day pass for 25 euro. But I personally bought a camping ticket and I picked the campsite Green Meadows. It is me, Michael, and another day, another me. I'm in Earth Garden, Earth Garden, yeah, I'm about to like get my ticket, get my wristband and just start camping, so I'm really hyped with this. This ticket cost me 40 euro and it included camping plus a festival. Wow, what a great price. I really like my campsite. There was a lot of room between tents, there was shade, there was really nice people, and there was actual pre-pitched tents. And one other thing, it was away from the main, main stages, so you actually got some sleep in that, which is really appreciated. I, yeah, good stuff. Wow. Wow, I went to bed at probably 3 a.m. last night. There was a lot of shows going on, absolutely amazing. It was like the opening night, so everything played later than usual. And well, so after that, I just went to bed, straight to bed. Pretty nice stuff. Woke up at 7.30 today, took a shower. The shower's open at 8. Then I went to yoga. Yoga for an hour and a half, and that was just beautiful. I absolutely loved it. I haven't really done group yoga before, so this is a new experience, but... I highly recommend. One other thing, a lot of the campers actually bought or brought hammocks. This allowed you to basically just find anybody out there with an empty hammock and just chill there with them. It was it was a weird experience, but it was so nice. So talking about walking to the other campsite, it was maybe like a five to ten minute walk across the whole festival. And the other campsite is called Festive Grove. And this is for the proper festival goers, like the people who love festivals at heart go there. The reason why I say that is because it is right between two stages and they usually finish at 5-ish a.m. Yeah, that's pretty late or early, whichever way you look at it. <laughs> After 5 a.m., a lot of the campers actually bring speakers, even though you're supposed to not, you're not supposed to. And they just keep the party going until like, day hours like 8 9 a.m. and you're like what so yeah if sleep is a priority don't go to festive grove stage wise there are five stages the first one i'm going to talk about is the electric grove this is the closest one to the green meadows campsite my campsite and it's open from 2 p.m. every day with good acts good musicians good djs playing until late hours normally 1 30 a.m. the most common music here is electro and techno and there is a range of music as you get into the as you get deeper into your mind. Like you have teams from let's say 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's a team of acid music or a team of psychedelic music, trance music, etc. And the artists that play that time will be into that music. So it's great if you want to experience a style that you like with a surety that it will be there. Yeah, it's great stuff. I spent a bit of time there, and it, yeah. As the I've been talking, there's been some clips from it now. Let me just play a video. Next stage 
which I'm going to talk about is the Strawberry Hill. This is the second one with DJs and electronic music. And this stage is usually open a bit later than the electronic sphere. And it has some more hardcore music. Like there's a lot of dubstep, hard, um, hard style. You also have drum and bass. You have house. Kind of that kind of stuff. One thing that is really strange about this stage and this festival is that you're in the middle of a lot of trees that are maybe like a meter and a half apart and you're there dancing to like drum and bass and like head bang, just like partying and yeah it's a weird combination of electronic music plus nature it's super unique and I think that Earth Garden is one of the few festivals that actually does this really well Stage number 3 The Roots Stage This is by far my favourite stage and it featured the biggest artist of the whole festival. Okay. Artists such as Wild Marmalade, David Lyon, uh, Lucanta, as well as Gentleman's Dub Club performed all here. And there are huge names that always deliver. They made a party singing amazing. Everyone together like that. Everyone together like that. All the way up. Everyone together like that. Everyone together like that. Everyone who likes alternative music, reggae, ska, will love the stage because the artists generally range in this stuff. There was one punk rock band. And a 
apart from that, yeah, it was the other categories that I mentioned. So super cool. Have a listen to some of these things. One thing to note is that this stage is always fully packed and there is a few reasons for this. One, it's right in the middle of the whole festival which is really easy to get to from either campsite. Then you have a lot of people just passing by like going to the toilet and they're like oh this music is awesome let's just chill here. It's really near to the alcohol and food stalls, they're practically like next door to each other. And the mattresses, yeah actually like king size mattresses are just laid out really close to that stage as well, so you can just shelter too. What's absolutely fantastic is that since this festival is still pretty small compared to some other big festivals, getting to the front row gives you no issues. Like I've been in the front row for pretty much all of the acts without like having to push, squeeze past people and it's super nice. Once you reach the front row, things change a bit. There's not a lot of like just jiving. People dance and party hard. There's just like a lot of dancing. People take off their sound and just dance barefoot, really get into it. They're like head bang. Yeah, there was one kind of rock band which, yeah, head bang. And yeah, everybody's super into the music. So it's really a music lover's paradise. Fourth stage. This is the Enchanted Forest. Now, this stage is a bit different from the others. It's a lot smaller and it's a lot more laid back. The music here is generally alternative and indie during the day and it ranges into DJs and fun fact, the artists from the other stages actually go to Enchanted Forest after their set is done. So yeah, you have pretty much all, all the music. You have electro, reggae, dub, step, everything is in the Enchanted Forest. The actual setting of the stage is so beautiful. You have lanterns with lights and different decorations everywhere. You have actual hammocks and you have the ethnic market really nearby. So everybody's just, you know, chilling. The last stage is the musical playground. And it's not really a stage as you might think. It is, it is basically a collection of instruments that campers bring to the ground and are free to use for anyone. People here just generally talk, dance, chill, because the whole floor of this area is essentially like a bunch of carpets and pillows and seats, so everybody's really relaxed here. And it's super nice, like you just grab a drum, grab a guitar, grab, grab like an electric piano, you just like chill. It's probably my favorite place to end the night and actually talk to people. For instance, I have never played the drums or any kind of drum instrument before and I just kind of grabbed, I think it was a sandbox, and I just started banging, getting tunes out and I was like setting up different artists, getting in there and oh, it was such a great time. I actually made quite a few friends here from just, you know, playing the drums. <laughs> and yeah, I was there at the musical playground after the other stages ended because there was no time limit or restraints to when you had to go home. You basically chill there until you wanted to. And it was super nice because I was normally there until 5 a.m. Yeah, security often told us to go to bed because we were getting too loud and yeah, complaints. But nevertheless, we, yeah, we just grabbed our drums and went somewhere else. The vibes were super mellow at this stage. So yes, these are the five stages at the Earth Garden 2018. They'll probably return in 2019. And I hope you kind of get a feel for, for them and kind of can know what you can expect hi 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 welcome back it is right about to turn i think 6 p.m on friday 1st of june and the main reason why i'm still on my phone today is well i want to vlog but it's way too loud out there 
because I've been dancing. I've been doing everything last night. Got back to the tent at like 3, 4 a.m. Yeah, no, it's more like 3, yeah. And I sat till like 7, took a shower, did everything. Went to, you, to the yoga session, absolutely fantastic. How you recommend doing yoga with other people is super good. So now, what did I get up to today? Honestly, quite a lot. I've just been floating about talking to new people. I've made like seven new friends. So that is fantastic. And yeah, we've just been chilling. I went to like the casual sessions or yeah, where you can just basically pick up an instrument and just chill, jive with it. You don't need to be part of the group. You just kind of join in and it's fantastic. And yeah, I, did, I was there for about two hours. Then I went to a few uh, performers. But nothing is really starting. Main audience is coming here at 7 p.m. and that's gonna be for the big, big guys. So yeah, I'll I'll stay up to date with that. But I won't be taking my camera too much. Yeah, I just want to chill here and it's fantastic and having to vlog. But anyway. next thing on my two talk list is the ethnic market. This market is right between the musical playground, the food stalls, and the enchanted forest. And I think. 20 to 40 different stalls, I didn't really count them myself. And you have jewelry, you have crystals, you have a lot of incense, you have clothes, like kind of hippie clothes, and you have other stuff like um, papers for rolling, cigarettes, etc. The, selection, the selections available are absolutely great, and the prices are, yeah, they're very reasonable, often cheaper than you find in shops in Ireland. Next is the food court. And this ranges throughout the festival, but it's mainly between the root stage and the ethnic market. So that kind of middle ground area. And here you have a lot of vendors, a lot of sellers, and you have a lot of fast food. But it's not the kind of Chinese fast food that you expect. You have different things like kebabs, you have wraps, you have falafel wraps, you have bagel bars, you have a lot of vegan stuff, quite a bit of vegan stuff, I really love that. You have like an authentic noodle joint. You have uh, burger places, like this chili St. Carney that I got for five years was a huge container and it just contained a lot of chips with kind of like chili flavor on top, toppings, it was, it was fabulous, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And pizza as well was really cheap, coffee too, it was just a really nice place to eat at and the prices were so reasonable, I, I couldn't really believe it. You could basically eat three meals a day for 15 euro and be super satisfied with that. One other thing, we are at the breakfast bar or brunch bar, I forget what it was called, at like 3 a.m. after some of the acts have ended and we were just dancing on the tabletops as they played music out of the radio. It was such a weird experience, we were just there dancing on the tables while some people were just eating and like drinking. But yeah, this kind of thing happens. You never know what you can expect. So now, let's talk about alcohol. Alcohol, alcohol. There is no shortage of bars. There is bars everywhere. But these are slightly different to your casual bar or place where you can get beer at a festival. You have to use these tokens. And you pay 20 euro and you get 15 tokens. And like a pint of beer is two tokens. A 330 ml one is I think one token. And that's how you kind of buy your alcohols with tokens. It's a bit of a weird system, but I guess it makes it easier during the night with like drunk people just giving them tokens to have waiting for change, etc. Beer roughly worked out at 260 per pint, which is pretty good. Like in Ireland, in an Irish pub, it's 480 per pint. So top notch Malta. I, I personally took a different approach. I went to the nearby town called Atard, A T T A R D. This is about a 20 minute walk from the festival grounds. And I went over my big hiking backpack and a few shopping bags to a supermarket called Scott's. Here I bought all the alcohol, all the food, etc. that I needed to survive the festival. Of course, I purchased stuff on site, but this is kind of like that safety deposit that I needed. In this supermarket, beers were as low as 50 cents for a can of 500 mils, 50 cents. And it was not bad beer, like the beer was pretty good. And then a vodka, like a bottle of 700 mils of vodka was 8 euro. What? Like you could basically get drunk for 8 euro for the whole festival, that is ridiculous in my opinion, but it was super handy, so I just took that approach. Um, I'm gonna keep, 
keep the three health. Now you have to drink the alcohol sorted, you need to consider drugs, because most festivals have a lot of drugs, and it's no mystery. Well, in Malta, there is a bit of a weird drug culture, like weed. If you have weed, it's super, super illegal, and nobody in a festival will sell or give you some. However, the pills are super popular. Like, I've heard of people having LSD, acid, MDMA, Xanax even, just around the festival grounds, and yeah, people were selling them quite commonly. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Strangely enough, I never felt unsafe with all these drugs floating about. Like, I've never had a drink spill on me, or I've never been pushed or fucked. And I was like super surprised, because you know, drugs can do weird things to people, and it was really mellow. Before your night of partying properly commences, you probably want to chill out a bit. This is where the campsite really shines. I chilled out at the hammocks with a few of the mates I made, and we just kind of played drinking games, chatted, and just chilled. It was very personal stuff, but it was super nice. But if you're not at a campsite, you can also chill out at the pillows at the musical playground all day long. It's completely like free and open. Or you can chill at the mattresses near the food stalls and the root stage. There's, I think, 12-ish mattresses, absolutely massive, and you can just sleep there louder and just chill out. There's no stress put on you if you're around that area. Next, you can also visit the healing fields to chill out. And when I'm t while I'm on that talk, let me talk about the healing fields. This is the part of the festival that I really, really value. You had acro yoga, I did this once, it was my first time, but I was with someone who was fairly experienced and yeah, it, it worked really nicely and I enjoyed it. Ah, good job. <laughs> there was an area where you could just give each other gifts, like a gift tent. Super nice, a lot of food went around, like jewellery, bracelets, really nice stuff. There was an art centre where you built whatever you wanted. A friend of mine upcycled a hammock from fishing nets and some wood. Like, wow, amazing. There was a healing area where a lot of people do an acupuncture, kind of sound therapy and other therapies. And oh my god, I'm in the healing fields and it's absolutely beautiful. They have like acro yoga, meditation, yeah, awesome. bare feet stuff, reiki massage and yeah, yeah most this of these like, things are free. There is a... a and there was a big tent with main, the main workshops. And these range from different topics like eating disorders, veganism, animal cruelty, permaculture, and other stuff that wasn't that much environmentally focused and more focused on yourself as a person, how to better yourself. I personally went to three workshops. One of them was called Money Magic. And videographer. <laughs> um, and lover. Yes. So. And everything else. <laughs> But we have this cost chair and then above that we don't put our own, like we don't price our, this experience up. We're allowing people to gift back what they at the end feel it was worth to them because we can't decide what the experience will be worth to you. Another one was, um, another one was on permaculture and how we can grow and how we can grow to establish that permanently. The sun shining every day, guys continuously, right? The other day, um, when I was teaching you in the morning, if you remember, I think it was you. And another one is a yoga class. I've actually went to two yoga classes, so I guess four workshops. And they were fabulous. Like, at the end of most of these workshops, you got to know the people you're sitting with as their group focus. You got to hug it out, spend time together. It was super, Lovely. A lot of people also cried, so it's it's humbling experience. There is no free place that I know of that has such an impact on you. Such a mesmerizing experience. You can spend your whole day there. You don't need to party. You don't need to go to a festival. You can just heal, and it's just fabulous. I really enjoyed the time that I spent there, and I I've learned a lot. One other thing: on the last morning of the festival, so the festival ended four nights. Then the morning that I was leaving. I actually had a massage done. It was a yomi yomi Hawaiian style massage and it was amazing. It was so refreshing. I just talked to the masseuse after and it was such a nice experience. 
I could honestly talk so much more about the healing fields and I really probably will because they are fabulous. I absolutely love them. I love everything about them. But now let me talk to you about the facilities on site. Facilities on Earth Garden area. There were toilets practically everywhere. There was like five places. One at each campsite, one by the roof stage and two other smaller areas by other stages. And these had toilet paper available. You also had a lot of taps like sinks with soap so you can wash your hands. Then there, there were showers that opened daily from 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. And these were basically big porta potties or like portable toilets with running tap water and like a shower hose. Super nice. I really got a fresh feeling after being in a shower for maybe five minutes. And yes, I did take daily showers in every morning. So yeah, it was definitely worth it. Not a lot of festivals have good shower facilities. So with the main points talked about, let me give you an overall conclusion on my feelings of the festival. It was amazing. The music was just great, even though I didn't know most of the artists beforehand. And the camping worked so well. On some of the afternoons, I didn't even lock my tent. I just let air out and I felt completely safe. The facilities were superb and the healing fields were not necessary, but I found them insanely powerful. And I also made a lot of friends which I did not expect or anticipate. You see, I went to this festival by myself. I had no friends with me and I wasn't planning to meet up with anyone. It was just me. By the end of this experience, this four night festival, I ended up befriending around 30 to 40 people. Some of them I've even added on Facebook and Instagram and I've been chatting to since. And I chilled with so many groups throughout the days and nights. And I just talked to everyone. Like on one of the days I seen a guy nearly pass out on a chair like 8 a.m. So I just sat beside him, started talking and then I was just jamming out in the musical playground playing drums as he was on bass. Like what? This wouldn't have happened if I didn't just sit with him and chat for maybe 15 minutes. And the other guy I seen just kind of like sleeping on a mattress so I just sat beside him asking him if it was free and we just started talking. He gave me some wine and it was really nice. <laughs> and the other guy I just started talking in one of the healing field sessions, yeah, during one of the workshops and we chilled for quite a bit. And the other guy I met as I was going to his shop. Then I just sat beside a few people, a few groups, in my camp grounds and just sat beside them, introduced myself and just asked them questions and we got talking. I ended up playing a lot of drinking games with these random people and it was just so brilliant. I, I wouldn't replace or change anything that I have done, it was just fabulous. And this is the thing, if I went with a group, I feel like I would be more inclined to stick with that group throughout, if that makes sense. I would just stick with my group because it's hard to merge group and group together or like if you're with a group it's hard to join someone who's kind of passed out. So all in all I'm super humbled that everybody who I talk to accepted me so nicely and basically treated me like their friend even though they only knew me for an hour or so. It was super fantastic like I am so thankful to everyone, everybody who made me feel this way. Another thing. <laughs> A fellow camper, Jess, gave me this beautiful bracelet on one of the last days and yeah, I still have it on me and I'm probably not going to take it off for quite a long time. It was just a nice, such a nice memory that reminds me of our whole, whole group. And yeah, people like Franklin. Franklin, I didn't know this guy. I said hi to him as he walked by. I said he has a nice necklace. It was actually beautiful. And I just, we hugged it out, he gave me the warmest hug ever, and it was just so amazing. Yeah, and even if you haven't talked to anyone, as you're walking by and you smile at someone, they will 100% smile back at you, wave, or like swing their arms saying like, come join me, come join us. These are people that you haven't talked to before, and it's just so nice and so friendly. And a thing that I did not already talk about is, this festival is a Malta. So a lot of the festival goers are the locals, which is a bit of a surprise. And they're all Maltese, but even though they speak Maltese, which is a bit similar to Arabic and Italian, they all know English, which is really cool because you can talk to the locals and just get to know about them and the local area and what they actually feel about the festival. 
Yeah, you practically end up talking to everyone. It's just a beautiful experience. I will definitely come back next year. Earth Garden 2018. I really appreciate you watching this video. Getting to know Earth Garden 2018. Finding out what you can expect, what you can see. Just looking at some of the acts. And thank you for watching. If you want to like watch any of my other videos from this holiday, please be sure to subscribe and wait out till I upload them. Thank you for watching.